James chapter 3 My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to build the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horse's mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn their whole body. Behold also the ships, which, though they be so great, and are driven by of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, whithersoever the governor listeth. Even so the tongue is a little member, and boasteth great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindleth. And the tongue is a fire, a world of, of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and is set on fire of, its, of hell. For every kind of beasts, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea, is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Therewith we bless God, even the Father, and therewith we curse men, which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. Doth a fountain send forth at the same place sweet water and bitter? Can the fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man, and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness of wisdom. But if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, glory not, and lie not against the truth. This wisdom, wisdom descendeth not from above, but is earthly, sensual, devilish. For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. James chapter 3. Encouragement along the way. Welcome back. This is a study on the book of James. Currently, we've done James 1 and 2, and this is James chapter 3. Like we have said before, James is the half-brother of Jesus Christ. So we would do well to listen to what this guy has to say. He grew up with Jesus, saw Jesus in his early years, and it's really fascinating because James was not a true believer until Jesus came back and was resurrected. Can you imagine that? I, I know sometimes I have had the thought, and perhaps I'm not alone, that if I was, it, things would be easier. Um, walking with Jesus would be easier if you could actually have walked with him back with the disciples back in the day. Um, and you would be on fire and you would be unflinching and you would never doubt and you would never falter and you would be, you know, all the way up, right? With Jesus. But the disciples were screwing up all the time. All the time. And I, I find it fascinating and really funny and, uh, a really deep revelation is that the disciples did not have the Holy Spirit. They had Jesus, but they were not operating in the Holy Spirit like Jesus. That's why Jesus had to die. He had to go to the cross so we could have the Holy Spirit when Jesus uh, went back up to heaven and made a perfect way through his sacrifice on the cross. See, the power of the Christian is in the cross and in the blood. Um, if you're currently lacking power, I recommend you look into the blood and you look onto the cross because that is where the Christian's power lies. Having said that, let's get into James chapter 3, verse 1. 
My brethren, be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Hmm. Perhaps uh, this is a reference to uh, the preachers of the Bible, um, that they will be judged more harshly. The Bible does say that the, uh, the shepherds of the flock are going to be judged more harshly. So um, if you're leading a church and you're leading the flock wayward, woo doggy. Mm. If that's not convicting, I don't know what it is. I'm talking to you guys, you prosperity preachers. Mm. Mr. Dollar, Mr. Copeland, Mr. Uh, take your pick. Not that prosperity isn't part of the Bible, but you, you are not um, safe, my friend, if you are deceiving God's people. Uh, the Lord will not be mocked. Vengeance is the Lord's. And he will have his retribution in full. Um, <laughs> his wrath, I mean, read, go open the Old Testament. See the glory of our, of our Father. See the glory of our God. Anyway, if any of you are seeking to be ministers and, and pastors and preachers, um, you will be judged more harshly on that judgment day at the Bema seat, at the seat of judgment. And you will be judged more harshly. Um, conversely, if you do well, um, I'm sure your gift and rewards are probably the greatest in heaven. Um, although the least among you is the greatest among you. So, who knows? Continuing on. Uh, yes, this word, bridal. Um, continuing on, verse 3. Behold, we put bits into the horses' mouths. That they may be that they may obey us and we turn about their whole body behold also the ships which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds yet are they turned about with a very small helm whithersoever the governor listeth even so the tongue is a little member and boasteth great things behold how great a matter a little fire kindleth see James uh, keeps referring to this idea of the tongue. The tongue. The power of life and death being, being held in the tongue. The power. Do you understand the power of the tongue? You know that old phrase, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me? That's some ish, y'all. Po the power of life and death is in the tongue. Now, you can... Let all things come and go effortlessly, like um, the Tao says, which I believe uh, Christians, uh, there's that should word again, should be doing, uh, must be doing rather. Um, we don't need to be swayed and up and down by uh, accusatory tone or any kind of thing given by the tongue. We can have perfect peace. Only the Christian, though, is able to have perfect peace. But this idea of the tongue, verse 6 says, And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members, that it defileth the whole body, and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. The tongue is set on fire of hell. Guys, have you ever read something like this in the Bible? See, this is why James was my favorite book of the Bible for so long uh, in my uh, early years in my Christian upbringing. In my uh, budding into the Christian soldier warrior of light that I have become. That the Holy Spirit has led me to be. James helped lay the foundation. I'm, I'm sure you can tell, you, you, you can rattle off any number of personal anecdotes where you have hurt someone with your tongue and you have been hurt by the tongue of someone else. It says that it's a world of iniquity. Can you believe that? I mean, our world, are you a traveler? Have you traveled this world? It's a pretty big place. 
the tongue inside all of uh, however many billions of people are on the planet is a world. So that's however, however many billions of people are on the planet, that's how many worlds of tongues. Man, think of all the variables, think of all the possibilities, think of all the hell being released on earth by evil, wicked, nasty tongue, right? But I find it, I, guys, we must be renewed. We must be made right. We must be transformed. Metanoia, mental transformation, heart transformation. We are not okay in our state. We have to have Jesus at our center. Jesus in us is the beginning of the transformation. And, well, let's continue on with this. Um, Verse number seven, for every kind of beasts and of birds and of serpents and of things in the sea is tamed and hath been tamed of mankind. Yes, because man is to go and to dominate the earth, which he certainly has. And some people have gone a little too far, I, I dare say, if not overtly too far. Uh, money, power, status, the God of this world. Um, that's what a lot of people are seeking. What does the Bible say? Matthew 6, verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. All the things that you need. And more. The fullness is only available through Jesus Christ. Alone. Only. So, all of God's fullness is in Jesus Christ. And when Jesus Christ is in you, you possess now all of God's fullness. This is the mystery of Christ in you, the hope of glory. Continuing on. Uh, verse number eight. But the tongue can no man tame. Oof. Oof. You hear this? No man can tame the tongue. Only the Spirit can tame your tongue, guys. How do we receive the Spirit that tames the tongue? Through Jesus and our center of our heart as our Savior and Redeemer and friend. Verse 8, But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Wow. So much for sticks and stones can break my bones, but words will never hurt me. <laughs> what about verse 8? But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. Verse 9, Therewith, oh, the, guys, this. See? If this isn't convicting, I, I don't know what is, y'all. Verse 9, Therewith we bless God, even the Father, and therewith we curse men, which are made after the similitude of God. In the image we are made. We bless God and we curse men with the same tongue. Do you think God likes that? Do you think he's okay with that? No. He's not okay with that. We are to be perfect, right? And we are to be made perfect. Christ in you, the hope of glory, you guys. Sanctification is a daily thing, but we are more than overcomers by him who, th who strengthens us. Continuing on. Verse 10. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessing and cursing. My brethren, these things ought not so to be. See? Verse 11, doth a fountain send forth the same place, sweet water and bitter? Of course not. Can a fig tree, my brethren, bear olive berries, either a vine, figs? So can no fountain both yield salt water and fresh. Who is a wise man and endued with knowledge among you? Let him show out of a good conversation his works with meekness and wisdom. Hmm. See, Lots is being said in this, but what it's stirring inside of me is humility, meekness. The meek shall inherit the earth. The Lord opposeth the proud, but lifteth up the humble. Show yourself with good conversation, you guys. Uh, Philippian, uh, yeah, the book of Philippians chapter four, whatever is good, whatever is kind, whatever is just, whatever is peaceable, whatever is... Um, you know, the rest of the things in Philippians chapter four, it's like verse seven or something. Think on these things, you guys talk on these things, not malice and evil and, and one upping and, and money and power and status and, and 
ego and hmm. guys are, are are you done suffering have you had enough of suffering in this life give Jesus a try I'll, I'll tell somebody you know if they're opposing to Jesus I'll be like okay well well look um, when you finally had enough of your suffering in life when you finally say enough I am done suffering give Jesus a try give Jesus a chance he will save he came to seek and to save those who are lost um, these are the words of Jesus come all, ye, all come ye all to me who are weary and heavy laden and I will give you rest for my yoke is easy and my burden is light mm, the words of Jesus that is the truth y'all continuing on um, verse number 14 but if ye have bitter envying and strife in your hearts glory not and lie not against the truth this wisdom descendeth not from above but is earthly, sensual, and devilish. Guys, if you have bitter envying and strife in your hearts, it is earthly, sensual, and devilish, and not from above. Do you understand? The fruits of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, long-suffering, forbearance, kindness, gentleness, goodness, um, and self-control. I might have forgotten one or two, but... Self-control is listed in the fruits of the Spirit, you guys. Self-control is an element of controlling your tongue. The fire of hell that is the potential of your tongue. Self-control is a fruit of the Spirit. Lashing out, being outraged. Ah! That is not holy. Continuing on. Verse 16, For where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Mm. Doesn't James just make it simple? Man, he just like lays it down. There's no mincing of words. He is talking plainly here. And a lot of parts in the Bible are um, symbolic and metaphorical and dense and very deep. <laughs> but James, he's... He's straight up. Verse 16, for where envying and strife is, there is confusion in every evil work. Doesn't this help you to organize your mind and your life and help point you in the right direction? Eliminate envying and strife, you guys. This is impossible without Jesus in your center. The first thing, if you are not saved, to do is to get saved and that is just simply to acknowledge your evil before the Lord and say Lord I acknowledge that I have been that I have wronged you I have failed you please forgive me God Jesus please come and live in my center of my heart as my Lord and Savior I want to be right with you Holy Spirit open my eyes to the truth that I may see make my heart clean again renew and restore unto me joy Lord and your joy and salvation Lord your salvation and, and renew my strength and, and renew a, a, a pure heart within me Lord and renew your free Holy Spirit your free spirit within me Lord that I may be free and that my heart may walk in liberty may live in liberty in freedom right Woo! Mm. I'm just quoting off a couple of other scriptures Ooh, man, that feels good. Okay, we'll end on verse 17 and 18. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. Yes. Yes. Don't you see? The fullness of joy is found in Jesus, only in Jesus. Peace that transcends all human understanding can be yours only in Christ Jesus. Don't you want that? Aren't you done with the confusion? 
with the anxious striving, with the toilsome labor, labor, with the envying, hmm, bitter envying and strife in your heart, anxiety, guys, we can be rid of anxiety. It can be gone forever through Jesus. Aren't you done with your anxiety? Aren't you tired of suffering? The book of Ecclesiastes tells us to ban it. It extols us to banish anxiety from our heart. No one can do this except through Jesus Christ in their center. No one is able to even remotely even approach this realm of banishing anxiety from your heart. And what does that mean to banish something? You cannot halfway banish something. Something is either banished or it is, or it is there or it isn't banished. It is extols you to banish anxiety from your heart. And you can, you guys. You can live a life of no anxiety, no stress. Peace that transcends all human understanding in Christ Jesus. Um, but the wisdom that is from above is first pure. First pure, do you see? First pure. Then peaceable, gentle, and easy to be entreated. Do you see the humility of this posture, of this point of view, of this perspective? Full of mercy and good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Without partiality, like James talks about in chapter 1 or 2, about the uh, treating the rich man better than the poor man. Partiality is a sin, you guys. Um, and without hypocrisy. Hmm. How many people have been driven away from the church by seeing the hypocrisy of other so-called believers? I believe and one of the number one reasons why people are leaving the church and have been put so put off by the church is because the hypocrisy of many believers. They're not walking the walk or, or, or talking the talk. We must be made right. Last verse, verse 18, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in, pe in peace of them that make peace. Yes, Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 6, blessed are the peacemakers. Mm -hmm. Guys, the Bible is, uh, I, heard, I heard someone describe it as the, our, our road map um, for navigating this life. Uh, there's an acronym for the Bible which I like and it says basic instructions before leaving earth Bible B-I-B-L-E basic instructions before leaving earth <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Thank God for the word. Thank God for the Bible. It is here for our benefits So I recommend you get into it and you get deep into it and you read it every day guys Be ye transformed by uh, the renewing of your mind and the reading of the word it is here for our help, you guys. God is abundantly good today. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, verse 8. Guys, we serve a good, good Father. Give your life to Jesus if you, if you haven't. I recommend you, you, you do that. And um, open yourself up to the possibility of metanoia mental transformation heart transformation renewal that's what jesus does he renews you so anyway guys i love you all and i'll see you guys on the next one until then